Hey guys, welcome back. All right, I am on to making this Disney Star Wars half marathon video that I talked about in the previous video. Um, you can see I got my shirt. It's uh, one of the perks to the race. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so anyway, let's see where to start. So is the race worth the cost? Uh, this... Disney, run Disney races are considerably more expensive than your average, you know, run-of-the-mill kind of race. They, I think I paid almost, probably at least double what I pay for a normal half marathon. Um, I think this one cost me about 180 bucks, which is kind of, it's pretty expensive to go do a race. And, you know, it is a Disneyland, which is kind of neat. Um... But is it worth it? Is it really, really worth it? Let's see. What did I get from this? I got a shirt. Obviously, I actually like this shirt. Usually when I do a run, they give me some crappy shirt that fits real weird and some odd color and has crappy artwork on it. And I actually like the art on this. I like the color. It's very comfortable. Uh, and it's something I would actually wear outside of, you know, going to sleep or uh, working in my shop or something. I'd actually put this shirt on and wear it somewhere. Um, I got this shirt. It's good. Um, they give you a pretty nice medal at the end. Again, like I mentioned in the last video, this is just a participation medal. So anybody who finishes the race will get one of these. So, and this is, it's really nicely made. It's got a nice uh, lanyard or whatever you call them, the, the little neck part. And it's, it's good. It's got a spot in the back where you can have it engraved. If, if you so desire, I don't really give a damn, but it's there if you want it. So that's a thing, that's pretty cool. Um, the whole race is obviously is themed, so they have, you know, Star Wars crap everywhere, and they have, um, you know, st everything's themed out Star Wars, so everybody's kind of dressed Star Warsy or has Star Wars stuff on, that's kind of fun, like I always, I mean, if you guys watch my videos, you know, I, I like that kind of thing, um, it's not like going to a convention necessarily, but it kind of has that vibe, it's a little more festive than a regular race, which I think is a, is a fun time, and it's more fun before and after the race definitely than a standard race where you're just waiting for your results you're waiting around you're looking at a bunch of people in like tiny shorts and you know sweating and whatnot it's it's like people are in, enjoying the the uh, environment or the atmosphere i guess so the atmosphere is good uh the disney themed kind of star wars stuff I kind of, I think I talked about this a few years ago in one of my videos. Uh, they kind of bastardized some of the stuff that I really like about Star Wars. So they have some of those new First Order Stormtroopers. They look pretty good, but they super overact everything. And there's something about the the delivery of a, a most Disney kind of like stage performance stuff. Not all, but but most, where it doesn't seem genuine. They're like, hey, we're super happy and cheery. Check us out. And it, in like 90% of the people are into it, but I, I look at it and it feels super fake to me and it, I can't, it feels hokey and weird and I wish they wouldn't go so overboard with that. But it's, overall, it's kind of separate from the race, but it's just part of the the thing. Everybody's in a good mood, so that's fine. If that's what they want to do, it's, it's fine. I can make another video about that some other time. I'll get back to the race stuff. Um, the, the course, we'll go into that. The course was really nice. It starts out, uh, goes through the parks, which is uh, Disney California Adventure and Disneyland. It goes through the parks, winds all around, um, and then it goes out onto the surface streets of Anaheim. And the course is generally flat. There's no hills or anything crazy. So if it's not quite straight enough that I think you could get a, a you know, a PR, like a, you know, a get a top time but you're we, you could do really well there if you're looking to get um like a qualifier for like boston marathon or new york marathon or one of those big races um this would probably be a good place to do that because the course is so flat and if you're a fast runner um it you can really just go all out and you don't have uh, a lot of uphills there are some areas through the parks that are a little curvy that would slow you down a little bit but overall it's um, a pretty fast course so from a running standpoint that's really really good uh, they did a very good job separating the runners, at least from what I could tell where I was at, um, by, based on the speeds. And most races do this. When you sign up, you'll fill out your forms and you say, I think I can finish in whatever time. 
And they look at that information and they put you into different areas so that the faster people in the front, the slower people in the back, and it kind of like helps as the race spreads out, um, the faster people aren't tripping over the slower people. Um, and this race was like that. They did a very good job organizing it because um, I, I'm a relatively fast runner. I'm not fast enough to do first place, second place, that kind of, you know, that level. But I am in the top 10% of almost every race I do. I come in, you know, pretty high up in the, in, um, the standings. And this one isn't, wasn't any different. I didn't even run that great, and I still came in in top 10%. But in order to do that, I wanted to be at the, in that front pack so I didn't have to fight my way through all the slow people. And to get in the front pack, you have to provide proof of previous race times, whereas most races you can just fill it out and they'll let you in. Uh, this one you actually had to go and find previous races. I had to go get a bunch of my previous races online and um, provide the links. Uh, to be sure that I was actually qualified to be in that position, which was kind of nice because uh, usually people will sign up and they'll put the wrong numbers and there's, you end up with slow people in, in the fastest corral. And this one wasn't like that. I think there were like two people that were definitely didn't belong there. Some people that were a little slower than me, but they weren't so much that it was, uh, you know, dangerous, like in an accident way. Like someone's going too slow and you're going fast. It's bad. If you were a little slower than you, you can go around them. That's fine. That's kind of how it was. It was it was uh, a nice setup, and for me, that was a, a perk. So I liked that a lot. Um, as I mentioned, the course goes through the park. So when you start the race, you do the first section is actually going through the park, which is really, really, really cool that you get to do that. But it's 5:30 in the morning, so it's dark out and you can't see a lot, and you're surrounded by thousands of people. So as you run through the parks, which should be a really cool experience. You can't really take it in because you're too busy focusing on the people around you. Um, now, if that was at the end of the race, where everybody has sort of spread out from each other by the time you've run 13 miles, everybody kind of like gets their pace and you know gets some space between all the competitors. If it ended in the park, it would be cooler. Now, I understand why they can't do that because 13 miles, you have these slow people that are gonna be coming in uh, at the point where the park is going to be opening. They need to open the park. So they need to get the people through the park first, clear out all the stuff so the park can open just like normal. So I get that. But that would be nice. However, that is not the case. So you're running through the park. Um, you can't look around much. I took a little bit of video here and there while I ran. It's going to be really crappy, but I'll put it in here like right now. So you can see that was just shaky, terrible video. But uh, that's that's kind of the thing. You get to run through those areas. It's neat. The rest of Surface Street's pretty cake. Um, let's see. They had mile markers. Every single mile was marked really well, so you could tell where you're at on the course. Uh, they had water and like Powerade at almost every single stop. And I think they had one or two. They definitely had one stop, but they might have two um, that had uh, cliff, like cliff company, there's cliff bars, they have the cliff shots or whatever they are, they're kind of like a gel, give you an energy boost if you're starting to bonk, which I ended up having to use one of those, which was very atypical of uh, my, my running. But, um, so they provided those, that's sort of typical of most races. Uh, when you get to the end, again, they, they put your medal on you, which is typical, and then you go through an end, they give you a packet with a bunch of snacks, and crap and it was sort of cold and they gave us these Mar mylar uh blankets to wrap up which i never received one of those um but it, it was it actually worked pretty well better than i expected um let's see here um they yeah, they had a massage area there that i think was free like you could go in and get a massage if you wanted um i've done a lot of the smaller races that are half as much money where they have like full-on buffets at the end you can go get like a meal and I didn't see anything like that here. So maybe it was there and I missed it, but I didn't see it if it was. So that's kind of a bummer. And the parking was 18 bucks. So to, you already paid all this money to race. And when you get there, you gotta pay 18 bucks. Now it's good for the whole day. So if you wanna stay in the parks for the rest of the day, you know, you got your, your $18 parking, which is still a little steep. But if you're just doing the race, 
18 bucks seems a little much. And I think they should give you a discount if you're doing the race. But, you know, that's just me. Everybody's going to pay it because where else are you going to park? Uh, yeah, so overall, I felt like it was pretty much worth the price for me. A little steep still, but I would do it again. If I, next year, I'll probably do this race again. I had a good time during the race. Uh, it's just fun being around all the theme stuff. I, I liked doing, you know, this kind of thing. I, it's a, a fun type of attention and you know people do creative things it's it's good so i would definitely do it again it is a little steep if it's your first race i might be a little much to pay for your first race i would say go do some cheaper races first and see how you like them to see if it's worth it because if you're going to go run half a, half a marathon it's 13 plus miles uh you want to make sure that you're in some kind of shape that you can finish it because if you're not going to finish it what the hell's the point of paying all that money to do the dumb thing um but that, that's all I would say. There's some little aspects of it uh, as far as Disney staff and things I could talk about in another video. I think it's more of a general Disney staff kind of critique. I don't want to say complaint because I know a lot of people work at Disney that are great. So uh, I just rewatched part of my video and I realized that I forgot to talk about the sign up process. If you are interested in doing any any of the uh, Run Disney races, I highly suggest marking the day when the um, when it goes online so that you can register that day because e the chances of not getting in are extremely high. Uh, the days when this race came online, I waited till after work to sign up, <clears throat> and I had intended to do the Rebel Challenge, which if I remember correctly, is the 5K, the 10K, the 15K, and the half marathon. <clears throat> and um, each race gets uh, a medal different than this one. The, each race has a different medal. And then you get a the Rebel Challenge medal. So you get five medals. And me being a sucker for Star Wars crap, it's like a, a big perk for me. Um, and I like to run, so I would have done, gladly done all those races. Uh, but the Rebel Challenge was sold out. Uh, in the first day that I went, we went on there to buy my tickets. No more tickets for or tickets. Uh, no more entries, register points, or whatever they call them. No more entries for the the uh, Rebel Rebel Challenge. And the only thing available was the half marathon. So I got in on that early. You know, after the race, I saw a lot of people with like ice on their knees and you know icing their legs and stuff, which uh, I'm not really used to seeing that. I've done these kind of races before, and I haven't seen so many people with, like, iced up knees, and I don't know if it's because people uh, aren't really used to running or have bad technique. And I, now when I see people with, like, in, knee injuries and, like, shin stuff and all that, um, it's almost 100%. It's Their running technique is kind of bad. I used to get those things all the time, and I changed my technique, and I've not had any problems like that ever since. Uh, I can get into that in another video, but anyway, so that's kind of my wrap on the marathon, on the half marathon. As far as it went for me, my run was good. I finished 323rd out of 15,000 people, so I still made top 10%. I didn't run my best at all. I ran almost a minute slower than uh, some of my other half marathon distances because um, I haven't run this distance in over a year. And I barely run this whole year, so it was uh, kind of my first time trying to go that far. And I ran a little slower, but still, 323rd, 323rd place out of 15,000 plus people. So that's that's pretty good. I like that. Um, happy with that result. But overall, yeah. So if you want to talk more about like running and how I like kind of keep myself lean and so forth for doing 3PO. That, those are some good topics I think I could maybe cover in the future. But uh, hopefully this was somewhat informative to people. And I'm going to try to edit this up, cut out some of the rambly stuff. And uh, I will see you guys real soon. So uh, have fun. Bye.